On to race number two, second on the program, and uh, we're still in class four company. 1,800 metres uh, the trip here. They were headed by Good Days, whose wins have come over the 2,000 and 2,200 metres. Same with Play It as well, a winner over the 2,200 metres. Red Elise up in trip, course and distance for the first time. Midnight Promise, a course and distance winner on his final start last season. Romantic Journey has his first start for Jimmy Ting. Golden Kid, a course and distance winner back in June. And back to Indigenous Star, who's second up, eligible for class five, but goes around with a lightweight here. And again, the uh, the Chung Fa horses, Garlic Yeah, has been uh, up and back within the last 30 days. He came back at the start of September. Dennis Yip and Alberto Sana combined with him. A little bit of a tricky speed map, this one. It is a long run down that back stretch. Let's remember last season that play it mid-race in a an event over the 2200, took off, whipped around them. He also did that in a 2000 metre race as well. So if that is the case, then he potentially is a horse that uh, may sit back and then get moving and generate a little bit of speed with a 10 pound claimer on. Um, and that could cause a little bit of a kerfuffle maybe back <laughs> in the field. So potentially a little tactical battle. Here's good days. He's just working with Villafon, who's uh, got a chance later on in, in uh, the card as well. But good days, nice uh, quiet piece down the back straight here with Zach Purden on. And uh, he should get a nice run from Barrier 3, as Brett mentioned. Full of choices. Full of chances, even. You can have as many cho choices if you want. <laughs> but full of chances goes nicely. The seek pieces will go on him. Another ride from Berta Rispoli uh, in this particular race. So his work's been pretty good leading into it. And so is Golden Kid. Uh, he found a bit of form towards the back end of last season. He was uh, very consistent, actually, with a couple of thirds and, he, and a win at Charton. And um, he's an, another one that can go forward from, the, from his barrier nine. All right, OK. Well, we saw fuller chances there in track work. Let's have a look at him in action, because he's already had a start uh, this season, along with readily saying good day. So obviously getting up from the 16 to the 1,800 uh, metres. Uh, but I thought he finished off uh, pretty strongly here behind Great Treasure. Yeah, I did too, Andrew. Um, you, yourself, and I also noted last season that he was a horse that looked to have a little bit of progress in him, a little bit of scope. I think he's getting better and better with racing and uh, more experience. And this was a nice performance. The... Eventual winner of this race, Great Treasure, actually was very competitive in Class 3 at his next start. Mm. If there is that tactical manoeuvre in the race and they generate some speed a fair way out, that'll just play right into his hands. And I'm going to stick with him because I think he's a horse on the way forward. Yeah, it was a good run and a good run from Red Alise. The door right. shut on him uh, and he lost his momentum. He's a horse who doesn't, who, f who finds a lot of problems at Red Alise in, in his run. So if he gets a clear run, I think he can be right in under over 1,800. Yeah, it'll be interesting, wouldn't it? The other yeah. step up in trip for him. Um, Indigenous style and enjoyable success. I gave him both chances on this occasion. Enjoyable success, disappointing. Indigenous Star will give another chance. I've assessed it the same, Andrew. I tipped enjoyable success on top. Maybe he needed the run. I've actually left him out here. I'll be kicking myself if he does run a better race because mm. I wanted to sneak him in. But having said that, there are four or five others that I, um, I like in the race as well. So I, I don't rate them... Well, both of them I rate as a reasonable chance, but... Um, yeah, enjoyable success was the one to miss out for me. Well, I put him in. I didn't put him in last time, yeah. but I put him in this time because <laughs> the cheek pieces go on him and he's up to 1,800 by Frankel, I think, will mm. suit him. So I put him in instead of Indigenous Star, who's only a one-time winner from his 21 starts. The positive, too, uh, from Paul's selections, um, when you look at him in that respect, Indigenous Star is actually eligible for a lower grade. So mm. they've got an option, should he not perform well here, to yeah. go into five. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's have a look at uh, Midnight Promise. Some winning form here with uh, Midnight Promise. Uh, this is over the 1,800 metres. The back end was the final day of the seat, in actual fact. Well, I guess a little bit like a Midnight Promise. You never know what you're going to get, do you? <laughs> but um, this guy's hard to, uh, to pick. I mean, have a look at his form. 10th out of 12th, 11th out of 11th, and then a win. So, um, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to steer away from Midnight <laughs> Promise. Is that why you want to do the show quick? Uh, anyway, um, yeah, he, he did actually uh, win, uh, you know, in a, in a driving finish here, but he's a hard horse to catch, as you mentioned, Brett. Yeah. All right. Okay. Shop elsewhere. We will be on this occasion. One more to have a look at, though, and it's uh, Golden Kid. Alberto Sanna will be in the saddle here on uh, Golden Kid. So he finished off last season really strongly. Um, he was beaten here on this occasion by Salto Olimpico, but he was um, otherwise... 
Um, I thought he finished off the season strongly. Yeah, well, the start before this was at Shouten and he won at Shouten. I think he's a better horse at Shouten. Uh, over the 1,800 metres looks ideal for him as well. So, look, I've, I found a place for him. Barry and Nine, I just thought it was a little bit awkward. He might have to be used up a little bit at the start, but I uh, still got him in the numbers. He was scratched, obviously, the ty typhoon meeting, and Alberto Santa, we spoke to him leading into that. He was quite confident the horse had run well, but he's not riding. He's riding garlic, yes. Yeah, so I'm not sure mm. what's going on with the booking there, but... Um, Judging the horce on his efforts, uh, chance. Yeah. Garlic, yeah, was in that race, in actual fact. The Salt Olympic one finished mm. um, fifth or sixth. But uh, pretty wide open contest. This one full of chances, favourite, Paul? Yeah, I've, I've, got, I've left about the end. I've, I've gone with Rena Lisa. I just thought the, the door shut at a vital time uh, for him. So he's on top. Uh, good days. Uh, he's one off 56. He's rated 60. Now, barrier three. Should get the best run in the race. Uh, I think it's slightly short for him, 1800, but I still think he'll run all right. We saw a golden kid. And then, I, look, I looked at Full of Chances, Enjoyable Success and Indigenous Star. I ended up with Enjoyable Success because I, I do like him up to 1,800 metres with the cheek pieces on. I think he'll run well. 3, 1, 9 and 10. But a double-figure price for Elise is uh, quite tempting for me. I'm going to play a trio here overall, which uh, allows me to include Enjoyable Success in it. I'm going to bank her, though, Full of Chances. I like him heading forward. I think he's a nice horse. He's starting to mature and furnish slowly, but there were plenty of positive signs out of his first up run. So he's the banker full of chances. Red Elise, Good Days, Indigenous Star, Enjoyable Success, the other one to include. Yep. Umberto in the first, I'll be in the second for me as well. 2 0 Italy. It will be at uh, Shot In <laughs> on Monday. He's been there for a while. <laughs> Big races come up as uh, races seven and eight. Uh, third is up next, uh, down to the 1200 metres here. It's a class four contest.